So it's Halloween tomorrow. Oh boy. It's my favorite time of the year. Yeah, it's it's crafty type people's time. Oh yeah. I love they making make costumes, costumes and I don't have like an excuse to normally. Oh crap. You're not gonna ask me what I'm going to No. Okay, cool. Uh uh-uh. uh. I don't I don't think you're cool enough to have a costume. But my I'll question take that for as a you shot. My question for you is what is your favorite costume that you've ever dressed up as? I feel like we've done You have done to describe this. it in t- in its entirety. Have we done this? No, before? I think you did. I feel like you did um, costumes that you were dressing up as. Can I answer for Peter? For Peter? Yeah. Sure. It also doesn't have to be for Halloween. If it was for like some random costume party dinosaur. or something, you could... Oh, the inflatable dinosaur. dinosaur. Inflatable dinosaur is still one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, the so that's I'm your not, favorite no, uh, costume of Peter. Yeah. The inflatable that's dinosaur. Not the it's not my favorite, though. It's good, though. It's good. Um, I accidentally took a lion costume from my college theater department. Accidentally. Yes, accidentally. Okay. And the mane was made out of like a brown mop. It was actually a really nice, really well done costume. And I wore that out on the town uh, in my early 20s. Okay. Yeah. I was, Did you was get a lot of, of compliments? No. Uh, a lot of dudes. <laughs> a lot of dudes wanted to high five me. <laughs> and zero women found me. In a attractive tiger costume? in a lion costume. I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but it's not awesome in the way you want it to be when you're 22 years old out in Dinky oh, Town. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think where awesome. people come up to you like, where'd you get that? Took it from my college theater department. Okay, bye. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> so it didn't work I have out. another Bud Light. Right, right. That's how my night went. <sighs> okay, I like that. Mine? No chicks. I really was not into... Halloween. I, I dressed up, but I probably didn't give it a lot of effort. Yeah. As a kid, I tried to find the least amount of effort. Uh, I don't know why that is. Um, so mine. This is gonna be so YHH answer, but it was dressing up as Tony the Tiger last year. At the spectacular. <laughs> it wasn't Halloween. I, I just said well, it doesn't she matter. Gave me an oh. there. So I wore that tiger costume, and. Putting it on was so fun. People were taking pictures of me, and they, they were getting a it's laugh like my out favorite of it. It was picture. so cool. I was having a blast. And then when I actually had to go execute it and go stand around with the costume on with this big head on, and I'm sweating, and it was not as <laughs> – So the, the buildup was awesome, but the actual execution of wearing it and being cool was not as cool Did as Did the kids it like it? Kids – I didn't think I thought the kids would love it more. Yeah, but I loved it when someone else wore the costume, like Nora Patak <laughs> or Vivian Vogel. Where, where or all of hold on, so all of a sudden, Grace Hovde, when they wore it, I thought it was awesome. When I actually had to wear it, it kind of sucked. How tall are you? I'm six foot. So eventually, the tiger went from a six foot human to like a four foot five. <laughs> no, Nora's bigger than that. The, She's the probably tail, five feet tall. The tail <laughs> dragging around on the. Ground. It was fantastic when <laughs> those three the girls tiger were wearing it. A lot smaller. I liked it a lot more when someone else was wearing it. It was just hot. It was yeah. really warm. But I loved wearing it, and we are we are definitely rocking the mascot again at the Scortacular this year for sure. Do we own? We that? will buy that for oh. sure. That's that. That is a. I was going to say, was tiger. that a rental? That was a rental, but that <laughs> is what I want. I thought it was awesome. Did you like it, Peter? Did you think it was kind of cool? I was skeptical at first because I think. There's a whatever. That's a long. There's so much else going on. Right. Well, it, <laughs> Add another. You want to you want right? to find the balance between entertaining but not Disney World because we're not running a theme Correct. park. It's a hockey tournament. But by the end of it, I thought it was great. So I mean, for I. a squirt tournament, it's supposed to be a bit of a carnival. It's supposed to be a bit of a circus. You've clearly never been a mascot before. If you were surprised at how warm it was. Oh my goodness! I've never been a mascot. It was hard, and I, I just gotta <laughs> embrace it more. I gotta I, next year when I do it. The Tigers gotta skate next year. It did skate. It has to skate. It did skate. No, it has to skate again. Oh, yeah. What's that? It has to skate again. Yes, it for sure will skate again. We should just have more. It will skate again. We should have more mascots, more puppets, more. Everything. Puppets. We should Puppet have, show. We should have Mickey and who's Minnie the, Mouse the walking theater major around. Here, the theater I major. can make everything. Yes. Can you? All the costumes. You can make puppets? Oh, I totally could. 
Okay, we need more puppets. I can make anything. More puppets. I'll make little puppets of you guys, and then you can have them on the show. Right down Kay- here. Kayla and I are tired of being the only yes. puppets here. <laughs> You need to stay up out the streets if you can't take the heat. I'm thinking that I'm going to make the puppets kind of like um, like Sesame Street style, where That's they've got the like big heads. Yep, I like that. Yeah, I'm going to figure Scott out how to make them. going to look a lot like Ernie from Ernie and the Bert, I think. Ernie and the Bert. Bert's gonna look like Bert. He's gonna like Bert. Bert He's with, got glasses. Bert with glasses. Yeah, that's Bert what it's with gonna glasses. look like. That's Which cool. is funny because personality wise, I think I'm closer to Bert, and you're closer and I'm to Ernie. Way closer to Ernie. Wait, yeah. which you're one? Way closer to Bert. the puppet that Bert doesn't know the, his ABCs. The, the, Yellow. He's the one that's the downer, and Ernie's like, let's do it, let's go after it. You know, but he doesn't have glasses. Yeah, Wait. but the things Ernie wants to go after are stupid and hard. <laughs> is it the long head? <laughs> that's Bert. That's Bert. That's, that's me. Bert. And oh, the, and the one with the funny laugh, Rubber Ducky. You're yeah, the one, the one with the funny laugh. That's you make Ernie. that time. Oh, okay. So much fun. Wow, Peter, you are making clip after clip right now. Jim Henson is a god. He is. <laughs> he is. All right, welcome to Ten Minutes. I'm Tony Scott. This is Peter Odney. Uh, we are rocking the Max Foundation today. Yes, Our we are. Our zips we got from. Our good friend, David Izzy Marvin, up in Warroad. Hello, Dave. Uh, we love the Max Foundation, everything that it's doing, uh, building curriculums for mental health education around the state of Minnesota and beyond. Uh, it's an awesome foundation. I love doing whatever we can to help them grow the brand of Max Foundation, which includes us going up to the Warroad Rozo game each year um, and and many more things, including the Celebrity Golf yeah, I think in the year 2023, I was there five times, five or six times in a one-year Yeah, year span. probably. Uh, my wife is beginning to think that I had a second family up in Warroad. Well, but, you do. Uh, I, they are all of those people are them. my family up there. I love Warroad. It's my favorite place to go. I think Debbie would really enjoy it if she came up. I think she's got to go up there and just kind of see the adulation I get when I'm in Warroad. So this is what I. This is the the love I deserve. It's in Warroad, that's for sure. Well, nobody ever accused you of being humble. <laughs> the adulation no. you get when you step off the private plane. That's right. That's okay. Right. All right. Thanks, All right. Ernie. Well, let's start. Okay, no problem, Bert. Uh, let's start talking about there are five things that happened last weekend on the ice. Five games. Yeah. One was a series of games, but we'll just kind of get to it. So game one, a lot of this is pumpkin related. Uh, game one, Chaska beats Andover. Was this eight to seven? Eight to seven in a in shootout. A shootout. This was in Graham one. I just kept getting pulled into there. You got to see this. Oh, I, I got pulled into this game three times. And I got pulled in right before Miles Marouk made one of the most unbelievable Datsuk moves. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. Uh, I think that Jazzy got sweet. that one. That's a clip that got clipped for the weekend. Uh, what else happened in that game? Well, uh, you got to go back to the first period if you want the full scope. Yeah. Because Chaska Chan went up four to nothing, and at our tournaments, running time happens when it's five goals. Yeah, so they're close. That's a tried and tested method, by the way. I love it. Too. People you... beacon about when running time kicks in. It's... Trust me, we've it's... tried this before. Yes. So four nothing Chaska Chan after the first period. Andover scores three times in the second to make it four to three going into the third. Chaska Chan scores three more times in the third period. Andover scores four more times to set up the 8-7 shootout. Pretty cool. Andover was a strange, strange team. They did. They had some highs and lows. Listen to this. They beat Brainerd 14-3 to in the High. first game. They yep. beat Duluth East 8-7. to in, in a crazy game. In in absolutely That was a crazy – that's a game I should have highlighted. That was bananas. I that was in that was insane. I was in that, that rink for – of the two hours that it took to complete the game, I think I was in there for an hour and a half of it. Uh, seven nothing loss against Minnetonka in their third game. Did the Huskies uh, the eight seven loss to Chask Chan and then a ten four win over Rogers. So Ch- Andover <laughs> was entertaining. They were for, to for say sure the least. That's a nice way of putting it. Speaking of entertaining, White Bear Lake what got put into running time by Wyzetta. They did. 
and tell me what happened after they went down 5 nothing in the third period. All right, I'm going to level with you. I penciled. I was looking at Game Sheet. God bless Game Sheet, by the way. I was looking at Game Sheet, keeping up with where we were on each rink, and I'm looking at rink three because games get lost over in rink three. They do. Right? That's the one rink where it's a little bit detached. Games, games get lost a little bit. So I'm looking at the the game sheet live update and it's four to four to nothing or something. Wyzetta, it's five nothing in the third period. And I pencil in Wyzetta in the white bracket final. I cross yeah. out White Bear's name. I move him down to the bottom bracket. We've and seen enough games go to running time where people will never come back. Yes. And I get a text from Andrew Ritter, our wonderful photographer, and he says, You gotta come into rink three and see this. And I'm thinking it's a fight. Or something bad is going on, and we need well, somebody. That's where we had a to fight earlier, there. and no, he says White Bears tied the game. So with four fourteen to go in the third period, Wyzetta goes up five nothing on a Kurt Sauer goal. KZ knock on knock on wood if you've heard that name before. And with four oh three to play, Emmett O'Leary scores. That's nice. White Bear gets on the board. They stop that's the clock. Nice. They stop the clock. That's nice. Three fifteen to go in the game. Johan Fondrick scores. It is my computer that's buzzing. Okay, I'm like 153. Looking around. Emmett Weaver scores. Now it's five to three, and you think that's still a nice story. Eventually, we'll it just came run back. It out. Eventually, Tommy Norman scores with 128 to go in the game to make it five to four, and then Emmett O'Leary scores again with 26 seconds left. And by that point, momentum is all on White Bear's side. If yeah. they they get into overtime. It's over. It's over, and they made it to overtime, and Emmett O'Leary scored with 11 seconds to go. In overtime. In overtime, because it's running time. If not, we would have gone right? to shootout. Some coaches like running time because it gives them a chance to just ice the puck repeatedly and kill the clock and get to a shootout. Other coaches, when they've got the momentum, probably if, don't like running you time. you Owen Ryan in your net, you're flipping the puck over the glass as much as you can. You know, If you have a really good goalie like White Bear did last year, they don't have Owen Ryan. No, I know, but I'm Owen saying Ryan if you got a really year. good goalie, you're going shoot for shootout. So it also depends on the on the coach. Some coaches know how to game the system in running time overtime. Yeah. We saw that a little bit. Eden Prairie with Matt Scott. I don't think they were but, gaming it, but they were for sure. No, but there's a method to sending out your five and then having one of them come back and then come back. pretending to mess up the order. And yeah. The referee gives them the benefit of the doubt, and all of a sudden, 25 all seconds. Also, 20 gone. seconds go off the clock. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So, with 11 seconds left in overtime, Emmett O'Leary, long story short, wins the game for White Bear. Great video of that, too. Did you? Was that you or is that Andrew who got that? Oh, on the bench? Of the bench reaction? That was me. That was awesome. That one was me. That one was easy. That was. I thought, you know what? If Wyzetta scores in overtime, there won't be that big of a reaction. It'll <laughs> just be kind of relief that we didn't totally screw it up. <laughs> choke this away but if i get the white bear one then it's all smiles it cool and black and, and their celery was bows. fantastic oh it was great all right next game um game three this is the champ game between shaska chan and awesome people grove awesome people grove beat its opponents 41 to nothing in yep. its four pool play games yeah that's insane. Yeah, and that I was after bad. For, I actually kind of felt bad for him. I'm <laughs> like, sorry, we couldn't get you better games. But what it tells me is their team is just so deep, you know, because their Pee Wee AA team is deep too. I so. was talking with an OMG parent, and I said, yeah, this worked out really well. After Tony and I spent an entire episode beacon about how a level is even because everybody's got a double A team they walk through. Their first everybody, four yeah. I thought the rest of it was pretty even. You know, even Chaska didn't really wipe out, wipe the floor. Maybe we had the brackets a little bit, you know, upside down or something. But I thought it turned out to be a pretty good tournament for, at the Little Pumpkin. But it was a great game. It was back and forth. Both teams had, you know, had their chance to win in regulation and then had their great chances. I thought the goaltenders, Johnny Baker and Easton Wybe, were fantastic were. in this game. They made some they phenomenal saves. It was a really fun game to watch. It was kind of sad to watch. Chaska lose because it would have been a really cool story. A team that had outscored its opponents forty-one nothing and ended up getting beat. That would have been a good story. Uh, both goalies played great. Well, what stood out to me in, in this game, Easton Nichols had two like I call them oh, paint chippers. That's he hit the mean. pipe so hard. What oh, do you mean? Don't he just bring played, that up. He don't played so up. good that game. He had breakaways. He just had. He's gonna have a day of of glory. Uh, Times 10 because he had a rough day oh that day, gosh. and then they didn't win in uh, overtime. So uh, what a fun game. Congratulations. Johnny Baker gets the uh, 
MVP. It kind of it kind of warmed my heart to see him win that award. So it was fun. Good day for Johnny. Great. And a great interview. My goodness, it was like interviewing an adult. <laughs> He is 45 years old. I, I'm convinced he's 45. On the inside, Johnny Baker's 45 years I old. I was blown away by his answers. They were not a 12 or 13-year-old kid's answers. They were no. really good, well thought out. That, so hats off to a, him. That is a mature human Both, being. Right yeah, there. and Hadley as well. She was very mature when she was that age. Uh, okay, uh, game four is the game of the year. I mean, if you, could, if you can top this one, I know we have an entire hockey season to top it, but... How do you top what happened at the end of that championship game? Ooh. Be pretty hard. That would be hard because I did not expect OMG to tie the game, let alone win the game. In eight seconds later. They just they had so many chances that Woodbury was able to get a, a, a shin pad on or the goaltender would make a save, and you just thought, all right, they're going to keep clearing it. They're going to keep clearing it. Woodbury can keep throwing body after body after body on the ice. Whereas OMG was going to stick with that five. Yeah. The Braden Dean and Keaton Vitsum and Zeke Perju and Gabriel. They were going to keep those five on the ice last, however long the game took. But you let that many shots up, you can't clear. And there was a point, so I watched the replay, and there was a point where Woodbury did clear the zone, but Keaton Vitsum caught it and yeah. put it back down on the right side of the red line, and they just went right back into the zone and set up again. Yeah. And then seconds later, Braden Dean capitalized on a loose puck. So if you keep, if you can't get it all the way out of the zone, it's going to come back to bite you eventually. Do you know that I had a uh, temporarily had a, 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 a moment of insanity I quoted after it. the goal? What do you mean? I quoted it in my postgame article. Holy S word? Yeah. Yeah, it was. And the thing is, I would. I have never sworn on. Well, I have once other before another time prior, but uh, I didn't even realize I said it mm. until like ten seconds later. I'm like, wait, did I just say that? I did yeah, say did. that. Oh my goodness, I did say that. Thankfully, because there's great technology in the world, we were able to, to mute out what I said. Why? Because it's just I didn't. I don't want that. On that my would, permanent record. Oh, that would be the second time in less than a year that where I've you've been bleeped. caught on a hot mic bleeping. Yeah, I'm. I need some help. You take it seriously. I need some help, but be you a, know what? what? My comeback, though, Peter, is what was every adult, maybe even every kid for that matter, thinking when Braden Dean scored? I think they were thinking, "Holy s word!" Oh, I think they were thinking, "Oh, it's Braden Dean." Yeah, right. Right. Oh, it's oh, it's Braden Dean. But all in all, it was a great tournament, great event. Uh, it was you wonderful. know, I I know I've pumped Morehead's tires a ton in this thing, but uh, them being back in the event and how good they are really made the event feel like we've. It was a complete event for the first time since we left Morehead uh, five years ago. I was like, okay, we're back. We have Morehead in this thing. We got all the best teams in the state in this yep. thing. Yeah, it was great. It was great to see them there, and they ended up winning the orange bracket. I'd be curious to see what that would have looked like. I'm not saying Rodgers wouldn't have won that round of 16 game, but if Moorhead was not playing in its first game of the season, correct? I wonder what the game would have looked like. No, it's it's going to be like that. They were when when they hosted up in in Moorhead. You were up there for some of those Moorhead ones. Yep. They were. They were a brand new as well. We were inserting their roster sheets into every program. Do you remember those days? Yeah. In the old office up yep. in the corner. I yeah. loved it. We were sequestered. Yeah, it was good. At a big conference table with great Wi-Fi. No one could find me. Was, yeah, you could get lost back fantastic. there pretty quickly, no question. All right. Uh, our first uh, sponsor of today's show. Oh, wait, we, we forgot about speaking of Moorhead. It's a good segue. Moorhead. Bantam AA, which may be the first Bantam team in the YHH era who could go undefeated in the I YHH era. Think so. you th I think this team could go undefeated. I don't think the numbers bear that out. I think it's just such a long season. Bantam's is so hard, At too. At some point, somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to be sick. Somebody's going to have a first communion or a confirmation or whatever they do. And the lineup's not going to look the way it did. I don't think it matters. I think this team going down to Shattuck and sweeping Shattuck. Do you know uh, what the scores were in those games? It was twelve to five and five to, to three. Five. No, they didn't go down. Shattuck came up. Oh, they did. Yeah. Wow. Shattuck That's even came better. Up. 
12 to 5 and 5 to 3. 12 to 5. When was the last time you know Shattuck's 14 U team gave up 12, 12 goals? Goal? Has that ever happened? Before? You know who played in goal, ironically? Weston, Weston Ream. Ream. From Moorhead, who was on their PBAA team last year. Are you so, sure it was Weston? Yeah, he was in the net. Someone someone re- told me that in the lobby le- this past weekend. So, uh, well, But Weston will have better days. He's a heck of a goalie, so I'm not worried about his career. Or no, his they'll be, I, it's going to take a lot for my heart to break for the Shattuck St. Mary's U14. Correct, team. correct. They have a lot of advantages, let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. All right, now on to our... Um, teams to watch our first uh, s- sponsor read for Red Balloon. Okay, this is a really cool company. Red Balloon yeah. is a urgent care for um, for families who need urgent care after hours. So from three o'clock to eleven o'clock, any diner is Red Balloon. It's run by nurse practitioners, so you can go there and get every service you would ever need from a doctor's office, but late in the day or into the evening. Oftentimes, a kid comes home sick, and they can do just about everything. Obviously, write prescriptions, diagnose. They can also do stitches, you know, cast, the whole deal. Full-on, full-service uh, doctor's office, for lack of a better word, run by a, a woman who's a hockey mom, Nicole Schmitz. Uh, Frankie Schmitz's mom started this thing because she found there was a need for people in the southwest suburbs and Minneapolis to come and attend their clinic. So check out Red Balloon. Next time you have a sick child or injured player, check out Red Balloon. uh, Any Dyna, 73rd in France. Wow. How'd I do? I think you did great. I'm on my way to Red Balloon right now. I have a growth that I would like to get checked out. Okay, good luck with that. Uh, After right. hours. All right, let's move it. At 3 o'clock, they open. Uh, okay. Oh, sick. Uh, let's talk about some teams to watch. Uh, the Now Rankings uh, computer portal is up and running. And I thought I would just pull teams that are ranked number one early, early in the season. they got to play more than five games to hit this. But and it's already full of fake scores. Fake scores? Yeah, there's a couple. I found a few. We're, we're yeah. getting those knocked out slowly but surely. I want to throw this warning out early, though. If they continue... We'll just take your team down. Take your team out. Yeah, it's not that hard. Or we'll just shut down the rankings completely. Or we'll just close them off. All that right. Could, that could be fun. That would be a lot of fun. All right, uh, BAM AA, uh, White Bear Lake is loaded this year. Are they, though? They were very, this is the same group of kids that won... The uh, Lumberjack Cup two years ago with Nash Road and that gang of fools. I think this is going to be a good team this year. Um, they are 7-0-1. Their only tie is with Minnetonka, who is the hardest band of AA team to read, by the way. They've had some big wins and some big losses. Hard to read those guys. But they've beaten OMG twice, which is uh, a feather in the hat. They've beaten Elk River twice, which is also pretty good. Uh, beat Woodbury 3-1. to Uh Keep an eye out for White Bear Lake's Bantam Double A team. You want to take the uh, New Prague Trojans? Yeah, I got one more thing on White Bear though. Let's White Bear has broken my heart so many times. They do. When they I break, pick, they always I pick them the in Blue Ox all the time. Final Four, championship game, what have you, and I keep getting hurt. Okay, but they didn't break your heart in 2017 when you were down in Marshall watching them win a state championship. I don't think I picked them to win that game. Oh, you didn't? No, I'm pretty sure I picked Ossie and Mabel Grove. I might have, but that was Ossie and Mabel Grove. That was their first-year Bantams when those Kukin and those guys were first-year Bantams. I didn't expect Ossie to win that state tournament. I expected this is a White good Bear. good team, though. You read it got a couple names on there? Yeah. Let's hear it. Nash well, Road, I already called out. Who Owen else? Owen Ryan's in goal. Yep. That helps. Yep. Uh, Corey Owen Kissner. Ryan, two shout-outs in one show. Corey Kissner, Good Alex player. Bolt, Braden Bois, Chase Mathowitz. That's a good team. Yari Oss. That's a good team. That's an old team, too. That Thank God it's an old team. That's an old team. White Bear is one of these associations that sometimes I think gets caught in the age gap thing. Yes. Where, oh, our Bantam AA team is really good this year, but... But our next really good crop isn't coming for, for two, two more years. years. Yeah. They're a, they're kind of a weird cyclical yep. association. That's a good description. New Prague Bantam A. 
When did New Prague get really good at banning? I have a? no idea, but I love their results. They've that's for outscored sure. Outscored opponents fifty four to three so far, including a nine nothing win over Duluth East and a ten nothing win over Laver. Did they play in a tournament or something? Did I they have a little jamboree. They must have where played they a got tournament. Princeton, Sauk Rapids, Laverne. Princeton has a preview. That's probably Princeton the Princeton has preview. A preview. Yeah, they've always had one. Interesting. For Bantam A. Well, yeah, they yeah, that dates way back. Ran a rough shot. They got over two everybody. rinks in Princeton, so it doesn't surprise me if they had a preview up there. So we got a nine-one win over Chaskachan, five-one over Minnesota River, nine-nothing over Princeton, twelve-one over Sauk Rapids, ten-nothing over Laverne, and nine-nothing over Duluth East. They are whooping it up wow. pretty good down there, in New Prague. Shout out to wow. them. All right, I got a band and B team before I have another sponsor read. This is prior, like I think they've won state. Bantam B several times, at least twice. I was just talking about Prior Lakes Bantam B program. Let's hear with somebody. it. Somebody, what did you say? They don't have a single A team, right? No, that's yeah, fine. So that's it goes not double against a the rules. B. That's not against the rules. They it's only have a, they only have four the Bantam B. If you only have four Bantam teams, why don't you go double A? It's B1, not against. B2, the, I'm not C. saying it's against the rules. No, that's fine. It's kind of what they end up having every year. It's good. They got good players every year. I like watching this team. My son played as Jefferson played against them in Bantam B's a few times and. They didn't like the fact that Tony Scott's dad's kid was on the team. They did not like that. Why not? I don't know. They just mentioned it all the time. If they got up on the legal, like, oh, yeah, tell Tony Scott how good we are, and I'm standing right there. <laughs> you know? Anyway. I don't know. I'm sorry. I never they played prior like this. They are 6-0. They've outscored their opponents 33-4, to including a 9 nothing rip over Jefferson yesterday. Uh, beat Lakeville Norris is always pretty good at this level as well. Egan one nothing, Elk River six nothing. They're off to a fast start again. I'm not surprised that they're really good. Sick, totally sick. Good answer there. Uh, okay, another uh, sponsor read for you. Our show is brought to you by Breakaway Academy. We'll have uh, Andy Brink. From the breakaway in here. We might get a different uh, member from the breakaway staff to come in and join us, but no one does a good, as good a job as Andy. Andy and I had some fun back and forth texts this weekend about peewee hockey. And uh, I don't know what how it – oh, I know what he said. He texted me, uh, has a team ever won the pumpkin that has – has a team ever won the pumpkin and the state championship? And I gave him the two teams that had won it. And I go, in fact, the team that won it, 2013 Edina, the first pumpkin ever, uh, beat Andy Brink's Chaska Chan uh, Pee Wee AA team in the finals over at Bloomington Ice Garden. It's probably coaching. So, yeah. So, did you? And I asked him if he remembered that. So, it's exciting to have uh, Breakaway back with us again this year. We will be putting out some great content with their student of the week. Uh, we'll have Andy on the show to talk about the school. They had a big uh, discovery night at their uh, lower school in Chaska last night. Uh, a great school, great opportunity for kids to go and learn uh, how to be a good teammate, good character. What were the three pillars? I just busted you. You don't have it, do you? Character. Athleticism. And I don't think athleticism education. is a pillar. That's a pillar. We gotta we gotta get this down. Is Kayla gonna get these for us? We're gonna have to look it up for us really quick. It's a horrible sponsor read if we don't have the three pillars. Come on, give me the pillars. Bring the pillars. Boy, the look on Kayla's face. Academics, athletics, and character. It's not. A, I just got it right. Not athleticism. Yeah, athleticism. <laughs> if you're bad at athletics, you're out. You're out. But I got the academics, athletics, not athleticism, and character. Thank you very much for Breakaway Academy for your sponsorship of today's programming. Breakaway Let's, with Breakaway. Here we go. Pee Wee Double A. Branding 101. He should have given you, you more credit for that. Should have. Pee Wee Double A. You got him over there? Where did it go? No. Where did you just throw that sheet? I had Woodbury? It. No, the one with Ossie Maple Grove on it. Are you printing on both sides? I'm, yeah. What are we, penny pinching here? I don't, it just printed that way. You got it, don't you? Well, now that I know that they're printing on both sides, yeah. There you go. Um, oh, look, it's Ossie Maple Grove. Well, they are number one, but maybe we'll just have that discussion. Are that they the one. are they the best team in the state? Dude, hell if I know. It's October 30th. 
no right idea. now, right now, if we did a staff rankings and we don't do staff rankings for a few weeks, but would you put them number one in the state? Yeah. I wouldn't. I would put Minnetonka number one in the state. Why? Minnetonka, granted, they lost to Woodbury in the wood in the uh, semifinals, but they were missing Donovan Clinn yep. and uh, Braylon, Braden, Tuzino, Braden. Tuzino. They were missing him. They were Tuzi? missing their two best players. And when they do get them Wait. back, I think they'll be number Did one. Did you say they're missing their two best players? Two of their best players. Two of their. Two of yeah, their, not their best go. players. Yeah, Colton Nash would definitely own that right. Yeah. Um, but when they get them back, I think they're the best team in the state. Um, okay. Okay. I'm not going to play that game, though. I'm just saying I think and they're the best team in the state. And if my aunt was my uncle, she'd... Shh. No, if my aunt had... Yeah, but you can't play the game of, well, if this happened, then this happened, then this happened. I, I'm with you, you on that. I still that. think they're the number one team in the state. I think the only and team... And they beat Maple Grove. The only... Yeah. So earlier. I would say Maple Grove, Woodbury, and Minnetonka are all even with... Edina, kind of that next group of teams. If I had to pick one team, it would be Woodbury. That's your number one? If OMG didn't exist. Well, no. I mean, I you got to pick a number one team in the state. I well, would then pick, I pick I OMG right now based on recent events. Okay, sure, no problem. I couldn't, bank, I couldn't base a ranking on anything other than what happened. Okay. This is the issue we run into with every ranking. I hear this from girls' high school parents all the time. Well, we you know, that. they well, lost that game because... Just, this team beat that team, and that team beat this team all they, the time. You know, they, they lost because they didn't have so-and-so, and they didn't have so... I, you can only go by what, the, what happened. I agree. All right, PBA, we're going to stay in southern Minnesota. Look at this. Look at what Austin has done, Peter. They are 7-0 and right now. They have outscored opponents sixty-six to two, including a four to two win over Edina. Well, that's a very good score for the Austin Packers. I hope it's real. I hope it's real too. If it's not real, I'm gonna be really mad. No, but they killed Rochester A. They beat Armstrong Cooper. This is a good team. And I think it'll be a fun team to watch them. I remember I remember this group two years ago in Squirts had a nice little run. I think we might even rank them uh in the top ten in staff rankings once. This is gonna be a fun team to watch. So uh, we will we will see Austin play hockey this year in uh, in PBA at some point. I know we'll see them. I it's hope exciting. So. I hope so. All right, uh, next sponsor, Reed General Sports. Have you gotten anything from General Sports lately? I got to hear it because you're just Mister General Sports. You go there all the time. You're constantly. I don't buying go equipment. there all you're the time. You're constantly buying equipment. What have you got? I'm not lately? always buying equipment. I'm getting my skate sharpened. So am I. I get my skate sharpened at General Sports. So do I. They do a nice job. What is your favorite part about getting your skate sharpened there? Uh, the fact that I can show up, I input my stuff into a computer, and I just leave my skates. Yeah, I like that part too. And then I always, I always hang around to see if they want to give me something. Do they give you or give you anything? No. You don't say, hey, I'm Peter Odney from YHH. I want no, something free. I don't. Do you say I that? Don't. No. God, no. I don't do that either. Um, I get my skate sharp in there. Um, I've had great service there. But what I like most about it is, like you said, the computer thing. You know, you go in there, yep. put your name in there, and then you get a text message when your skates are done. Yeah, I, I enjoy that fact. You can do that at a couple of other places, but. I don't know. I just I prefer General Sports. They're a sponsor. And they're pro. They're absolutely pro. They're very good at what they do. They also right. have really good. So I was there the other day, and I was looking at gloves because I got a pair of gloves that are about worn down in my palms, and they got buckets of high-end, gently used gloves. Really? Yeah, from Prior Lake and Minnetonka, and I'm assuming there are some Edina gloves in there too. But if you're looking for a deal, you can find one at General Sports. You don't Absolutely. have to go to play it again. No offense, play it again. No, no, that's fine. They're not a sponsor. Um, okay, so let's talk. I, I We didn't have any girls. Um, There's not a lot going on in girls. There right weren't now. a lot of scores yet. I, I feel like you got to have at least five scores for us to talk about. There were only a couple teams. There's only one team in 15A, and the rest of everyone else is three or four games. So I didn't want to talk about – Results from teams after with three scores. It's not enough to comment yet. So, But I do have a girl I would like to talk about. Well, that's great because um, I have five players from second. the pumpkin I'd like to talk Don't about. And this girl's name is Madeline Lee. It's Madeline with a Y. Madeline with a Y. Um, and Madeline's dad got us that jersey after I gushed about how cool it was on Hockey Day a couple years ago. 
So I got Madeline Lee's Hockey Day jersey, and I didn't know at the time that Madeline was going to commit to St. Cloud State University. Congratulations. I thought was fantastic to hear, and here's why. And I will go on a rant right now, and you can follow me up or you can just shut me down. Yeah, I'm playing but sporkle quizzes. I like Madeline Lee for this reason. She did not end up going leaving White Bear Lake to play at one of the following three schools like friends of hers from White Bear Lake did. Hill Murray, Gentry Academy, Creighton Durham Hall. She stayed at home. She put the nose to the grindstone. She made national camps. She earned it on her own. She went out there and she did it and she got it. She didn't have to move. She didn't have to move ever to find that Division One commitment. And, and it's a reminder for all of us at the boys' level and the girls' level that if you want to be a Division One player, keep working hard. And if you're skilled and athletic enough, it will happen for you. You don't have to move to be successful. She had 39 points last year. Yeah, for White Bear Lake. And if you know anything about girls hockey, they're nowhere near the top 10 in the state. And sorry, <laughs> White Bear Lake. Are you well? That's a plug for next week's show. Um, they could be. I hope. I hope they are. It'd be fantastic. Tony. They might be just outside the top ten. I'm actually looking at their roster right now. They got a nice little roster. They're gonna be good. They're gonna be good. So they really hats off, are. How hats off to Madeline Lee. Players? Any any thoughts on Madeline Lee before we move on to your Peter's picks? And I think she's picks? a great player. I had a long conversation with a couple of veteran hockey parents this weekend over. This the you know it's a new year you see new names on on new rosters and I I think that there there are some players that I think overshadow the fact that some people do move for legitimate reasons I mean job right. job change divorce separation what have you but the only thing that I can guarantee is that you're all going to end up playing with me on Wednesday nights at some point. <laughs> Whether you where do you skate Roseville Roseville nice. you're all we play with their D one guys. There's an 80 year old dentist. There's high school dropouts. There are kids that I've watched in the Blue Ox are now playing. Yeah, Dominic Hauer, Centennial's finest. He's there sometimes. But my point is, no matter where you move, no matter how many points you end up with, no matter how many summer championships you win, no matter how many quarter zips you own, you're all going to end up playing with me on Wednesdays. So enjoy the ride. Play where you're going to actually get to play. Play with people you like. And, you know, time is short. I have a very hot take that I'm just letting simmer right now. It's, I, like, it's, like a, it's a pot of chili, but I'm going to release this take probably on our boys' high school show. Okay. I'm not going to – I'm not you're releasing not the take now. I, no. I'm also a kid who switched associations and came close to transferring. Yeah. Well, I'm a kid who begged my parents to send me to Blake – I did not beg I my parents begged. to send me to Blank. I wanted no. to go to Blake because they had a better golf team. My my transfer was And I not. wasn't going to play high school hockey at Southwest until my junior year minimum. My transfer was not my idea. But I didn't end up at Blake, just so you know. I, I, it was just too hard. Did I ever tell you about almost transferring? From Yeah, you did. To Como? Yeah. I had a 2.4 grade point average my freshman wow. year. My dad said if you're going to get C's, you can do that for free at Como. Nice. <laughs> I like that. I like that. All Probably right, let's talk player. about some players. All right, I got five. Hold on, these me, are me. these are uh, pumpkin players that we that won't be, you know. Uh, well, some didn't even make the all tournament team, Mister All Tournament Team guy. I bet you Martinson did. Yeah, he did. So a few of these made the all tournament <laughs> team. Uh, at last count, I think. Yeah, a couple of them did. A couple of them did. Uh, don't, Connor don't Martinson give it away yet. from Duluth East. He had a highlight real goal. Uh, during the tournament, and he was outstanding. Seven goals and ten points for the Hounds. Emmett O'Leary is the clear offensive leader for a very young White Bear Lake Yeah, they're team. good, though. They're good. They are good. They always are, but it's a, a young group that hasn't had a ton of – I mean, it's Pee so you're going from squirts where it's kind of roll the pucks out and let them play. I don't know right. how much system teaching you do at squirts, but it's a young team. Emmett O'Leary is the catalyst. Six goals, ten points. Uh, Mason West from St. Michael Albertville, he ended up – He had a great turn. Nine goals and drew some heavy praise from a couple of people – Watching the games. Kellen Blair from Rogers. He was outstanding all weekend in the faceoff circle. Uh, he had five goals. I love eight that kid. Points. He plays so hard. He really does. And Gavin Peach. Gavin Peach. Gavin who Peach. I ran into a couple of Andover kids at the hotel that we were staying at. Really? And I said, How do you say Gavin's last name? And I asked, 
if he was new because I'd never read his name before. I said, no, he's an Andover guy. So it looks like Gavin Peach is blossoming into a standout hockey player. Seven goals and ten points. I love for the Huskies. That. I, I love, love it too. It great. He's a good player. I, I broadcasted him on Saturday. I also learned a couple of kids' middle names. Really? Oh yeah, they because they, they were in trouble. No, because they, I think they just <laughs> recently found out what some of their friends' middle names oh, are. They're having they, some fun with that. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. So, All right, I got mine. I have. I don't have their stats in front of me like you did. Nice work. Why don't you use game sheet? No, I'm not going to. I'm just going to read off, and I'm going to tell you what I thought of them. Uh, the, the one that just jumped out at me the most all weekend is a kid from Woodbury named C.J. Dornfeld. And if you listen to any of my three broadcasts, I just raved about how or what a great job he did. What's pre, that? Or if you listen to the pre-tournament podcast. Did you talk about him on there? He was my you? player to watch. Yeah, nice work. Yeah. Well, C.J. is a big kid. Uh, he looks like a, a kid who plays football and baseball or lacrosse. He feels like a, a looks like a... You know, all-around athlete. He made great plays with the puck. He was smart. Uh, it was it was just a fun kid to watch. Every time he he and Jimmy Miller got on the ice, I knew good things were going to happen for the um, Predators. So there's one. Another one is, speaking of smart, I think he ended up leading Edina and scoring Jamison Matushek. Yes. Uh, the kid is a great passer. Obviously, he's got a great – he's had a rocket of a shot ever since he was a, a, a mite. I remember Jamison back playing for the machine. He's a heck of a player, fun to watch, and, and you know, just a kid. He's always, I've known him for quite some time. He's always got a big smile on his face in the lobby. Like you need about five or six Jamison and two shacks on your team to be a to have a good team, and, and we need more of him. Um, Noah Adams from Eden Prairie yep. had an incredible overtime game winner over your White Bear Lake Bears over in rank two, rank one. That I get one tough, and two mixed up. It was, that was a tough game. It to was watch. a good game. Yeah, it was, it was a tough game. And then uh, Wyatt Webster from Chaska Chan. Uh, this kid can just fly. I mean, he is a absolute blazer out there. Can he fly like a stormhawk? He can fly like a stormhawk. And then finally, we've talked about uh, kids that are uh, forwards and guys that are getting a lot of points. But here's a guy, Kellen Crenn, pretty much uh, put his name on the map. He was a big goaltender for uh, Wyzetta's A team. And Wyzetta's A team was the first team to beat a Woodbury a team in the little pumpkin and uh, he had a big game that game i think he had close to 40 saves in that one so kellen over, Kren is over 40 kellen Kren is one that really stood out to me all weekend for why is that his a team so those are my five guys to watch outside of the obvious ones like colton nash and tyson saul scheider <laughs> and jack kaiser those and brain dean those kids are really easy to spot but these are ones a little bit uh, under the radar like martinson and dornfeld and uh those kids coming in to the tournament did quite well so there we go i'm glad we could throw some names out there that people I like might, doing might that. not be uh, familiar with i like doing that um next sponsor read is map south hockey um i spent a lot of time over at st thomas arena uh in the last six weeks i've been over there to visit with the staff the coaching staff over at ust men and women uh, i spent time there with our Banama Elite League over at St. Thomas. But the one that's thing that stands out to me over there is just the facilities. Take the people out of it. The facilities there where you can come and train in the summertime and and get access to a shooting area, a stick handling area, a weightlifting area, an off ice area, and then obviously really good sheet of ice to practice on. And then you mix that in with all the great people at Map South Hockey. Uh, it's a fantastic place to train. They got kids coming from Rochester, Edina, Plymouth, Matamidi. It's not just a bunch of kids that go to St. Thomas Academy. It's just this, there are a lot of different kids from all over the region that come and train with the people at Map South. They got great couches too. Yeah, they're great couches. Great couches. Uh, all right, uh, let's move on to roses and thorns. Um, you said you didn't have any. I can't wait. I love when you try to just make it up as you go. But I have, I'll start out with my thorn first. Do we go thorn first or rose first? Yeah, let's go thorn first. We'll end up thorn first. Note. I have a thorn uh, for someone. We had, we almost delivered a perfect tournament, by the way, uh, last weekend in Rochester. I mean, as far as when we were figuring we're bringing in new iPads, new game sheets. We had a lot of different things that were going on, new employees, new tournament directors. I thought from a deliverable, deliverable perspective, everything was top-notch, uh, except one thing that was completely 
out of our control that wasn't staffed with us. It's called control the controllables, right? Control what you can control. And this was a uh, an error made uh, within the staff, we'll just say, that could have been fixed. And my thorn goes out to that group of people who didn't, who just completely messed something up. And uh, I wasn't happy um, at the time. I didn't show it on my face. I was held, you know, I kept under good composure, but it wasn't fun for one hour uh, on Sunday morning. We'll just say that. Oh, I don't, do I have a thorn? You don't have one. Do I really have a thorn? I don't really have one. That shows you how well we did. That we didn't really, there was no complaining. There was no, there was nothing bad. Well, I, I mentioned this to a f- not a few people, but a couple of people at least. When you've dealt with things that are actually bad. horrible, yeah, little stuff just doesn't. It's not going to get to me. It doesn't even register. It's not going to get to me. It doesn't even register. Uh, I do have several roses, though. Okay, you well, out your you go first, Mr. Rose. I have just one. I have a couple. One goes to our tournament staff. That was the most relaxed I've ever been leaving the rink after a tournament. Uh, it was Jenny fantastic. and Michelle and Jossie and Laura handling so much of the administrative stuff allowed the rest of us, the 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 uh, unessential workers, the to take pictures team. and make videos Broadcast and actually games. watch some of the hockey so that we aren't just looking at score sheets when we do some of our post-tournament stuff. Big shout out to our tournament staff. Uh, my other rose is to Game Sheet, quite honestly, because Game Sheet made everything so easy. Makes it a little bit easier, that's for I, sure. It is what a system. No looking for score sheets. No wrong scores. It was fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Okay. Um, that's your, your two. I'll go with my rose. I'm going to f- clinch the show by uh, handing a dozen roses. Not just one rose, but a dozen roses to my good friend. Uh, I'm a big fan of this kid, Austin Gibson from Rochester. Yeah. Austin uh, lost a lot of weight. Uh, was very unhealthy last hockey season, but somehow fought through, played in the state high school hockey tournament for Rochester Century, and then two, three, four weeks after the season was over, found out he had cancer. He had um, lymphoma, uh, leukemia, correct? Uh, I I don't want to. I'm not sure exactly. I don't, don't want to guess. Whatever he has, brand. he's gone through chemotherapy for the last uh, X number of months, five months, and he has gained his weight back in spades. He's getting his hair back. He's a new kid. He is yeah. feeling his oats, and he's excited for the hockey season. He's going to get the red jersey taken off pretty soon. He's going to be cleared for contact. Um. I've known Austin since before he played squirt hockey, and uh, he's done scoring for us. He's done work for us. Uh, he, he always says he's going to be the president and CEO of YHH <laughs> someday, and I don't doubt that. He loves hockey. He loves scoring. He loves working for us. Uh, it was just great to see him back behind the uh, concession stand working with his mom and dad there at, at, at Grand Arena. And it was fun to see him. He was all filled out. He looked healthy. He looked like Austin. He looked like the best Austin I've ever seen. Yep. And uh, to me, my rose roses go out to Austin. Great to see you, buddy. And I can't wait to put that interview together with you someday. It's going to happen He's this year. He's working 14-hour shifts yeah. in the concession yeah. stand. Uh, a moment ago, I mentioned things that actually matter. That would be something that actually matters. Absolutely. That's something that you you can get upset about. Well, thank you to our sponsors, Red Balloon, uh, Breakaway Academy, General Sports, and Map Self Hockey. Thanks to our staff to make this thing possible, Peter and Kayla. And looking forward to a great season. Thanks for tuning in to 10 Minutes. You need to stay up out the streets if you can't take the heat. You need to stay up out the streets if you can't take the heat. Cause it get cold like Minnesota. Cold like Minnesota. Cold like Minnesota. Cold like Minnesota. Need to stay up out the streets.